YouTube, we're back. Thank you again for joining me. Today we are reviewing a BBM 2011P, which is from the UK. I know I keep saying that, but it's true. This is the same model as a BBM 1911. Uh, they are equivalent models. The, the uh, owner's manuals are the same. They share the same owner's manual. The P stands for PAL. Um, and as far as the numbering, 20 versus 19, I have no idea. It's the same tube. Um, but uh, this TV came out around 1995, uh, mid-90s. Um, only does 240p or 480i. Um, it has a 900 TVL tube. It actually, in the owner's manual, says exceeds 900 TVL. So uh, an extremely high, uh, high resolution uh, tube. Um, this, uh, it, it has a switchable power supply, uh, as we'll show you in a second. So this one, just with a simple flip of a switch, you can switch it from uh, the UK uh, or, you know, 220 volt to 120. So um, I, I got worried when it said P for PAL, but uh, this particular model has a BK142 card, which is an NTSC decoder. So uh, handles NTSC signals. No problem. I, I'm not sure if it's an optional card or not. I did verify that this unit does have it. There's several cards, internal cards, that you can add. Um, it's not like some of the other BVMs where you add external cards to add inputs. And this one, you can add internal cards to add decoding uh, capabilities and, and things of that nature. So it's, it's a little bit different um, how it works, um, but as far as the lineage, uh, this so this model came out in the mid '90s. The late '90s was when the BVM 20F1E came out. Um, so that was, uh, you know, the late '90s, and then obviously the the BVM D20 was the early 2000s. Um, and then the A20 after that would be you know mid mid 2000s. So that's kind of where this model fits in the the lineup, but at the time, this was Sony's premium 20 inch monitor. Uh, this was their flagship 900 TVL monitor, and it shows. Um, the The picture quality is extremely good. Uh, I, let me zoom in a little bit while I talk, but um, try and avoid some of these scan lines, but uh, I was really impressed with, with the TVL. Um, the, the vividness of the image this this monitor i i think it's got some hours on it i mean not too many but um just looking on the inside of it it you know i guess it is almost 20 years old but um or over 20 years old 23 24 years old uh so you know i guess for that age it doesn't really have too much dust but it's it's in pretty good shape uh the case is, is overall in pretty good shape but um what's cool about well, there's several things that are cool about this and there's, there's some disadvantages or at least one disadvantage it only has one set of inputs but on the positive side um it's got lots of cool stuff so the first off the input panel will go through there um degauss button you know pretty straightforward i read in the owner's manual it says do not use an external degaussing tool that will damage the unit so didn't really realize that but um Anyway, it's got built-in degauss, which, uh, uh, which most of these BBMs do. Uh, under scan and over scan, you can change the, the scan size. Um, I don't know why you'd use some of this stuff. But um, what else? Uh, like other BBMs, you can turn on and off the switches with these buttons below, and then you can turn the knobs to uh, make adjustments, which is nice. Um, the input selector is just a simple, uh, t like a toggle switch kind of thing. Uh, you just hit hit the inputs to switch the uh, hit the buttons to switch the inputs, um, and then what's cool is kind of hidden down below here is you turn the key, which is a Sony key by the way, which is kind of cool. Um, but uh, you pull this rack out, and inside the rack uh, you have all sorts of controls, uh, and we'll go into some of these uh, here. But um, anyway, lots of different controls. You can adjust all sorts of things. So on the newer models, a lot of this stuff is done digitally through the menu. 
but uh, these are more analog, which I think makes it even cooler, honestly. Having all these potentiometers and, and LEDs and, and these little micro switches, they're really cool micro switches. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that really comes through, but they're, they're these really nice tactile feeling micro switches. Uh, and then down inside the holes, you can see the, the screws for the potentiometers. So you can make all sorts of analog adjustments. So this truly is just an analog machine. Um, no digital controls really. Uh, so anyway, um, that's the control panel. Uh, we'll see. And then as we move around the back here, So uh, in the back, one downside is it's only got one, it does have a set of RGB inputs, which is key. Um, so that's what I have hooked up right now. Uh, but on the back here, you have a whole series of BNC connectors. That's a Bayonet Neil Konsolman connector for those who don't know. Bayonet is a type of locking connector uh, with a locking mechanism. That's called a Bayonet style connector. And then Councilman Neil, uh, or Neil Councilman, those are the two guys who uh, created the type of connector. Um, there are 75 ohms of resistance. Uh, the resistance, for those who don't know, a little BNC terminology, uh, is determined by the surface area of the center pin of the center conductor. So that center pin, the surface area of it, is what determines the resistance of the connector end. Um, conversely, RCA connectors are 110 ohm and have a much larger center pin. Um, just a little bit of connector knowledge, so that's, that's what I do for my job. Um, anyway, back from nerding out. Uh, on the back here, I just used a standard power cable, uh, and then I had to change out the fuse because there's a 220 volt fuse in there. So I did change out the fuse to a 4 amp 250 volt fuse, which is what the uh, owner's manual recommends. And then of course I had to switch the uh, power supply switch uh, over to 120 volt. So uh, after doing that, it powered right up, uh, took the NTSC signal, no problem. So, um, you know, that is basically that. But, uh, you know, the unit weighs a lot. I'd say it probably weighs about 100 pounds. Uh, which is in line with some of the other BVMs. It's just a big, heavy metal unit. Uh, you really, you really notice it compared to, uh, you know, like a, like an L5, a 20 L5. It's just, it's a smaller unit. It's not as heavy. Uh, same with an M2. Um, none of these uh, uh, monitors are as big as uh, these BVMs. So uh, it's just, it's just something to keep in mind. They're they're big. I like the old school uh, HR logo. It's kind of cool. Um, it's kind of from another time. The new ones are all big and, you know, poofy. So it's kind of nice to see the, uh, the old school ones. But um, I don't know. I don't really know what else to say. I, I'm really impressed with, with, this, with this monitor. I mean, I have several BVMs and I've had, you know, 20 M2s, L5s. I've had lots of different monitors through here. And this one... Um, has has been as good as as any I'm, I'm really pleased with it if you see a 1911 or, or a 2011 p you know definitely take a look at it because they have great pictures so i'll try and leave you with some uh, footage but uh thanks for watching and i will catch you next time thanks bye